Hey, boo thing. So thank you guys for tuning back in. If you are new here, if this is the first video of mine that you are watching, my name is Jennifer and I share skincare, hair care, health care, mental health, get your shit together videos. <laughs> um, but anyways, thank you for tuning in for my three things or three processes, tips, tricks, whatever you want to call it. These are three things that have transformed my skin and I'm going to jump right into it. Okay, so the first tip that I have for you is to thoroughly remove your makeup before washing your face and or double cleanse. What does that mean, right? So typically what I do now is I will use a makeup remover. I know I said I don't believe in them in one of my other videos. I'll explain. So. I will manually remove the makeup from my face with my jojoba oil or another oil and a cotton swab first. I will then use, let me find it, my purifying cleansing gel. So this is a makeup remover. Can you see it? Ooh, that lighting, y'all. I'm new to this. New recording device and a ring light. What? Okay, so you cannot clearly see the product unless damn it is ridiculously hot how, how, how do y'all do it i don't know how the, the beauty gurus do it but um i am going to have a full blog review as well or blog post on this as well so you'll see a picture of this product but it is a purifying cleansing gel in the description you will see that it is marketed as a sulfate sulfate-free cleanser and a makeup remover. It's derived from amino acids and it deeply cleans your skin while protecting its natural moisture barrier. So I will use this as a makeup remover if I'm not already um, removing it with my oil and my cotton swab. I'll use this and then I'll go in with a more gentle cleanser, which is, I'm still using my boo y'all, my Olay. Gentle foaming cleanser. It's a hundred percent oil free. Let me put the oils on my face. I don't need it in my cleanser I'm not doing the oil cleansing method. I've heard great things about it But I don't want a product that specifically has oils in it yet I'm not there yet. So for now I am using Bay, the oil cleansing gentle foaming cleanser by oil of Olay It has not done me wrong. It has aloe in it, which is one of my favorite ingredients for my skin it's gentle and it's a staple. So I, I, I have definitely fell off. I'm, I'm way past, I'm blabbing at this point. But my point in showing you both products, I'm not product pushing, you use whatever products work well for you. But I am simply saying me double cleansing, taking the time to thoroughly cleanse my skin to make sure I've removed all traces of makeup, any dirt, any grime, any outside stuff that I've exposed my skin to, taking the time to clearly take everything off has worked wonders for my skin. Now, let me go back to that statement to make sure that I've taken everything off. These are not harsh products. So I'm not using something that's going to strip my skin. I'm not using something and then vigorously washing my face to where I'm, I'm washing or cleaning it raw. These are natural or close to natural products and they thoroughly clean my face with still leaving my face feeling like skin. So it feels clean, but it feels soft, moisturized, and it feels like skin. So that's my first trick taking the time to thoroughly remove makeup and clean your skin. Now that actually leads into my second tip trick, which would be to clean your skin for a longer period of time. So I don't remember how I stumbled upon, but I'm so happy that I did. I stumbled upon an esthetician. She goes by LA Beautyologist on Instagram. I will mention her, um, profile down below so you see the exact spelling but 
watching her videos and her video went viral so you may have already heard about it or seen it but she talks about the importance of cleaning your skin for 60 seconds in the past i would just wash through or rush through washing my face so i would you know remove my makeup if i had any makeup on for the day quickly wash my face i would be you know you're lucky if i if you got more than that out of me now first of all now i really enjoy washing my face like i could be dead to the world tired passed out on the couch i'm still going to get up and come wash my face because it really does it's like a it's a form of self-care for me it sounds so cheesy it sounds so ridiculous and i know everybody is using that phrase right now but legit me washing my face and taking care of my skin makes me feel good so i actually enjoy washing my face for 60 seconds or more and sometimes i go beyond the 60 seconds if 60 seconds sounds like a long time for you one of her recommendations was to sing um, the theme song to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air while you're washing your face. I don't do that. I mean, it's one of my favorite shows. I'm not, I'm not shading. But what I typically do is I just let my thoughts go wherever they go. So if it's been a long, stressful day for me, which is coming more frequently these days because of my job. But if it's been a long day, like I, I'm just chilling, like I'm washing my face. I'm thinking about things. That's my time to just have to myself and to enjoy and get into what I'm doing. Sometimes, like I said, I find myself washing my face for longer than 60 seconds, which to me isn't a bad thing because again, I'm using calm, natural, um, what's the word, sensitive or delicate products to where washing your face for a longer period of time isn't really doing harm to my skin. So that is my second tip, tip trick. I'm gonna get through this, y'all. That is my second tip trick to wash your face for a longer period of time. And of course, if you want to know the details as to why, oh, sorry, back it up. Also, when you're washing your face for a longer period of time, when you're washing your face for the 60 seconds, it's called the 60 second rule. You want to make sure that the only tool that you are using are your fingers. You don't need any brushes. You don't need any sponges. You don't need um, any tools aside from your God-given ones. So you are literally just washing your face. Um, and she gives a great example of what that looks like. I'm not going to get into that here. Maybe in another video, if you want to see it, let me know down below. But she gives a great you know, presentation of what that looks like. You're actually washing here above your hairline. You're washing here, you know, around your ears. You're taking your time. And it's also important to make sure that you are washing your face in the right direction. So you want to make sure that you're going upwards. Sagging, wrinkles, fine lines, all that is real, especially as you're getting older. So you want to make sure that you are washing your face the right way. And don't forget your neck. Your neck is a part of your face, boo. Okay, that's it. All right, my tip trick number three would be using natural. You guys are gonna get so sick of me saying this. Using natural or close to natural ingredients. And me incorporating oils into my regimen has been a game changer. A game changer. So if you've watched my other two videos, you already know how much I love my jojoba oil. You already know how much I love my argan oil. I have found love for another oil, which you guys, you guys. So it is called rose hip seed oil. There's a rose oil and then there's a rose hip seed oil. So make sure that you are researching and, and knowing the differences between the two if you decide to go out and purchase. So this one just happens to be from Pure Adore. Now, I want to say this and I'm thinking of actually dedicating another video to this entirely, but if for some reason you feel um, the need to go out and buy oils after watching this video. I want you to keep one thing in mind Not all oils are created equally. So that goes to say First of all, you want to do your research. You want to get oils that are compatible with your skin type I can't stress that enough. Please do not go out and put coconut oil on your face 
please do not go out and put olive oil on your face if you have sensitive skin. There is something on the internet, and I don't want to link it down below just because I've seen so many different scales and I've seen so many different numbers. I don't know which one is valid. So I want you to do your own research, but there is something on the internet that's called a scale of non-comedogenic. I Hopefully I didn't butcher that. But all oils have some level of being comedogenic, non-comedogenic, which basically means how much it could potentially clog your pores. So I prefer to use oils that are scaled or rated a zero, a one, maybe a two. I don't, need, I don't, I don't like seeing the twos, but some of the oils that I use are a two. So obviously the scale goes from zero to five. Zero meaning it will not clog your pores at all, and five meaning it's gonna clog your pores, like you're gonna break out, it's guaranteed, don't put this shit on your face. So a zero, for example, argan oil is a zero, based on some of the scales that I've read. Again, I've seen different information on different sources, but the consensus on most of the scales that I've read is that argan oil is a zero. Grapeseed oil is also a zero. Coconut oil, on most of the scales that I've read, is a four. What does that tell you? Coconut oil should not be put on your face. Coconut oil should not be put on your face. Now, because I know somebody's gonna drag me, there are, I don't know why my, my nose is itching, y'all, I apologize. There are some people that don't have sensitive skin and their skin is just resilient and they can put whatever, they can do whatever, they can not have a regimen, they can drink soda and not ever drink water and any products that they put on their face will not break them out. Like that's, I don't know, maybe it's hereditary, maybe they're just blessed, but what I am recommending is if you have sensitive skin, please do not go above a three, y'all. Pay attention to the scale. So do your research when it comes to what oils are compatible with your skincare. A simple Google search will help you tremendously. So typically what I do is I'll Google oils for sensitive skin, oils for acne prone skin, oils for anti-aging, oils for um, hyperpigmentation. By process of elimination, you'll get to see what oils work best for you, what oils um, you should probably stay away from, and that will help a lot. Now also with me saying that not all oils are created equally, I want you to pay attention to the ingredients inside of the oils that you're getting. So when you shop Amazon or Whole Foods or Bulk Apothecary, any of these websites that you use, even if you just go into the store, you go into um, like the grocery store or you go into, I'm noticing now that like Marshalls, Ross, TJ Maxx, everybody has oils, right? Flip that bottle over and look at what you are about to purchase. You want to make sure that it is virgin or extra virgin. You want to make sure that it's 100% cold pressed hexane free, no parabens, no colors added, no fragr fragrances added. Um, and my personal preference is I don't even like getting the oils that come pre-mixed. So it can be like a jojoba oil with vitamin E and with coconut oil and with grapeseed oil. No, I want to be in charge of mixing my oils myself. I want to get an oil that is 100% what I intend to buy. So I don't like doing the additives or the mixes, that's just my preference. But again, if you do, just make sure that you're getting something that is 100% virgin, um, paraben free, no chemicals, no fragrances, no additives, the purest of the pure. If you need any help or recommendations with where to buy oils, comment down below and I'll share some gems with you. But that was it. I just wanted to give you guys the three tips for saving your skin. Hopefully this has helped you. Comment down below if you have any questions. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Okay, wait, but like, did we forget to mention that I'm doing this video with no makeup on just so you guys can see my skin? I looked at some of the playback and I feel like I look like a naked mole rat. Like, I I'm okay with going outside with no makeup on. Please believe this is typically my everyday look especially for work, but like I don't even have on any under eye concealer and I, I feel so naked. I feel so naked. This is what I do for y'all. I'm just saying.